So I'm excited to share this insight with you guys. Um, I'm excited to share this backstory of how Asteria came about and really the music behind it and the story behind the music. It was definitely a tough process having to relive these moments uh, but also make the music genuine. But I think it was a way to help me process what I was feeling. This has been quite the experience and truthfully I wanted to share with you guys because I think once you know the backstory, the album is going to play a lot differently. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed it if you listened to it already. I hope you also stick through this so you can tell me if it plays differently, but I think it will. Because I, I think this EP is, is more of an experience. I, I wanted you guys to feel the story. Thank you for, for streaming it and you can find it on all platforms. And please, once you listen to, to the breakdown and you hear the story, I would love to hear which one just really touches you and which one you connect with the most. Stick around so uh, you can get the full story. <sighs> wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, listen, I, I don't even know where to begin because Whew. Oh, this is not going to be a funny video, but I really want to share with you how we got to this point. Oh, geez. Ooh. All right. So this video might get heavy. I miss my grandma. I think that's how I'm going to start this video. I miss my grandma. Now, this video has taken a long time to to be made. So, you know, life life has been lifing out there. But Asteria, this is a project that means a lot to me. And I want to share with you guys my life experience and how this EP came about and what it is about. It's been a year that she's passed on and quite frankly life has not been the same since. Life has been different without her. Life has changed without her. Life feels a little bit empty without her. My grandma is someone who is very special to me. She was our family's biggest supporter whether it was a life-changing event, graduations, um, family having babies, uh, holiday parties, uh, or whether she indulged in my travesuras and we would hang out, go to the movies, sometimes even make funny videos. Uh, she is the definition of a strong, caring, beautiful, dedicated woman. If you ever needed a definition or someone who encompasses all those qualities, you'd be looking at her. She, you know, whether fighting El Comité to protect her husband in Cuba or leaving everything behind to start a new life with no opportunities in Tenerife, the Canary Islands, and then ultimately arriving in the US. And then on top of that, shortly after being diagnosed with cancer, uh, she was a special somebody. Uh, back in September, 2022, she had a life-threatening surgery. She had like a bowel blockage. Her intestine basically coiled up and perforated. And she was rushed to the hospital, rushed to the ER. And doctors were saying that she wasn't going to survive without the surgery. 
but then the surgery was going to be very intense and there was a very low probability of survival. So that really put us in a tough spot as a family. Uh, but we opted for her to have the surgery and just leave it in God's hands. And she survived the surgery. They removed maybe about a foot of one of her intestines. She pushed through. She, you know, my grandma was a tough cookie. <laughs> the doctor said, you know, the next 72 hours are going to be very pivotal. And uh, she made it through the first 72 hours. The doctors were amazed. And obviously, I mean, God had his hands on this whole situation. Uh, but she needed therapy, physical therapy. She was retaining water and she needed uh, to get strong to be able to be discharged. Uh, if you're like me, my family is Cuban and uh, <laughs> apparently all Cubans are, are doctors and they self-diagnose and while she didn't have any diet restrictions, she would say, yeah, I, I can't eat that, I can't eat that. And the doctor's like, no, she, she's good, she's good. And that's actually when I decided to take leave to help and support her and motivate her and, and just be her hype man, just, you know. But I, I wanted to see everything through and I was in a position where I could take leave. Some days were better than others and there were bad days and those bad days ended up her being back into the ER. So all that back and forth, her body was deteriorating and her body couldn't anymore. And she was put on hospice. And uh, eight days later, she passed away on December 11th. So I was going through a lot. There was so many emotions and I didn't want to burden people with all these emotions. I know everyone has their own lives and my friends and my family were very supportive and we were all there for each other. But you know, you're, you're going through it, right? And I used music as an outlet. So I started putting these feelings into music. And I will say that it started when she was going on hospice and you know at this point hospice was the way to make sure that she was at peace she wasn't feeling any more pain and she was at peace she was at peace and the hospice doctor and hospice nurse were trying to give us uh, updates and, and what they were thinking. And obviously God has the last say. They were uh, thinking that how the vitals were were looking and, and all that, that she probably had about three days uh, you know, she, she was strong. She was on hospice for eight days. Those eight days felt like a month. Let me tell you, let me tell you. So to distract myself, like I said, I started putting music together, but there's just something about watching someone take their last breaths that changes you. And quite frankly, I don't think I'll ever be the same after this. And I think about it every day. It's, it's tough, right? Um, and so much happened and through it all, I can just testify to God taking care of all the little details. It's just, when I think back, I, I know I was, I was going through a rough time, but 
um, I was blessed. I, I, you know, God was with us through, through all of it. But my grandma lived a long life. She was 89. And uh, unfortunately, when she died, it was three months before her 90th birthday. And as you can imagine, we all had so many emotions, so many different feelings, so many different questions to ask. It, it was hard, it was hard. And I wanted to channel some of that in music. And that's kind of where the concept of Asteria started. Uh, at first it was only one or two songs for the moment. And then as, as I noticed that her 90th birthday was around the corner, uh, I, I just wanted to do something special. I, I know she's no longer with us, but that doesn't mean that I can't commemorate her life and I can't uh, commemorate her, her legacy, right? So f for me, I, I figured, why not? Um, and like I said, that's where Astadia came about and I, I tried to be very detail-oriented. Her favorite color is red. So that's why you got the album cover. It's red. There is some black in there because there were dark times, so, but it's gradient because it wasn't always dark. Asteria is actually, or was her middle name. And funny, funny thing about that is that sometimes uh, there are families that treat their elders with so much respect. Uh, so they call them Don or Donas. Uh, usted and all this, which is fine, but my family uh, has always been very casual and, and, uh, and not about that. But to joke around, I would call her Doña Steria, and then uh, to even be more dramatic, uh, she's from Las Villas, so I would just, you know, <laughs> call out and be like, Doña Steria de Las Villas. But I, I wasn't gonna put all that on the album, right? So. You got Asteria, you got the red, favorite color. My grandma was also an artist. She was a painter. So when you see the album cover, there is art in that middle square. That's actually one of her paintings. And I thought it was so, so important to use, but also so key to the whole project, because as you can see, there's so many different colors and all those colors represent different emotions and I feel like I felt all those different emotions so I decided to incorporate it into the album cover and like I said it's, I, I try to be so intentional and I also put little details throughout all the songs I wanted to make sure that uh, I did something that uh, she would ultimately like, you know, um, and, and that's where the Asteria album comes from. And I, I want to be able to share with you guys, uh, all the different details and all the backstories to this album. And I, I am so happy that you guys tuned in so that I can share this. And I'm, I'm pretty excited that I can share this with you guys. So please stay tuned and, and just follow me, walk with me through this breakdown. So Asteria is a six track EP that I released on what would have been my grandmother's 90th birthday. I just felt that since everything happened so near to the birthday that uh, it was important, at least for me, to and honor that legacy that she left behind. Now the six tracks uh, are supposed to be a story through music of the time that I was with her at the hospital for those three months and uh, it's either what I was feeling at the moment or what was happening at that moment. It's been, it's been a long time and I've been wanting to do this for a while now. So 
So the first song, I put that in there because it's the first song that I ever released. Um, and, and she was so excited for me. My, my, her and, and the rest of my family are, have been so supportive uh, through, through my, throughout my life. Um, so I felt it was important to put that song just to kick off um, the, the album or the EP. Now, the song catching up, the, the meaning or how that came about is that I was in the, uh, working in the health industry and things had changed so much, but I was also in my bubble because it was, it was a rough time. All my, my efforts went into the job and trying to keep people safe. So once things were normalizing and we figured out what this new way of life is, then that's where catching up came about because it just felt like life's changed and I'm just here catching up with it, right? So uh, that's where that came from. But I also remember I had my car packed and everything since I took a leave from work. And it was also about catching up with the doctors, with the care team, and checking all the, the clinical information that I could because I wanted to be very hands-on with my grandmother's care. So that's why and how I decided to kick off the EP with Catching Up. Now remember that I said that I tried to be very intentional with all the details or as many details as I could. The second track is called The Turn for the Worse. That's actually one of the things that I emailed my employer as we were exchanging emails to check in with each other and, and see how things were going. And that's when things were, were getting worse. Um, I will say that throughout everything and even the worst parts, my grandma didn't feel pain and uh, she wasn't in, in this agony, you know, just uh, you know, sometimes people are, are in so much pain, even with painkillers, where they're just like, oh God, take me here. No, um, she never felt that way, so I'm, I'm very happy about that. But once we've reached this point, you know, th things got a little different and things got heavy. So that's why this song changes its tone. And even in the beginning, you had the, the little synthesizer and then it's supposed to suck you into the story and, and really let you know, hey, like Kevin Hart says, it's about to go down. So there's, there's, I, I want you guys to feel a little bit of anger in there, uh, a little bit of just the feeling of navigating things uh, and a little bit of chaos too. We're not doctors and even doctors, you know, they had been saying things and they were amazed at the fact that she, uh, even up, up to uh, hospice, that she was still with us. Um, so, you know, God, God was good. God was good. And he still is. He still is. But it's, it's supposed to suck you right in. So you hear the drums actually change, go back and, and forth a little bit between the two rhythms and then are the drums gonna stay are they not and then it changes so it's supposed to symbolize her going back and forth between the ER the hospital and then switching over to subacute almost at the middle mark you'll hear these like beeps right or these blips and that is supposed to represent her heart monitor. And, and then the way it ends, it's like, whoa, what, what is going on? And that's what we were feeling. You know, God knows what's gonna happen and knows what's going on and will be going on, but, but we don't. And that's how uh, a turn for the worse came about. Now, you guys, if you've listened to the, to the EP, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are saying or asking yourselves, what does Caramel Macchiato 
have to do with any of this. It sounds like a love song. It's very R&B. But you guys remember that I said I was very intentional, right? So, Caramel Macchiato is a song about uh, me thinking that a nurse and I were hitting it off. She was so nice. She was very gentle with my grandmother and uh, she got along with my grandmother and we just had great conversations. But she was working 12 hour shifts, which ended up being longer. And I could see you know, there were some days that she was stressed out more than others. So me thinking, hey, I wanna try to build a connection there without being overbearing or, or anything. I would go across the street to get Starbucks. I actually ended up calling my friend because I don't drink coffee, nor do I go to Starbucks. So I was like, hey, well, what's something that I can get that's just playing it safe? <laughs> She's like, oh, you can get like a cappuccino. Uh, and I'm like, but a, like a, an iced cappuccino? I was like, is a macchiato a thing? Because it sounds familiar. She's like, oh yeah, you can get a... Uh, Macchiato? Caramel Macchiato. So that's what I ended up getting. Now I won't tell you her name. I don't want to put her on blast. Uh, but I got the nurse Caramel Macchiatos. And um, she was so sweet. Uh, actually, I thought I had gotten a sign. Definitely not, at least at that time. <laughs> um, so at, at the point that my grandma was uh, put on hospice and transferred to the fifth floor. After a few days, she stopped responding, but in the beginning, she was nodding or shaking her head, but could barely keep her eyes open, even before uh, morphine or anything. So the nurse came up to visit and uh, show us her support and check in with us. But when she left, I go up to my grandma and I go, Abuela, you know who came to visit you? She slightly shook her head, right? But then I told her, oh, it was so-and-so, the nurse from downstairs. She wanted to come and check how you were doing. And she had already known about the caramel macchiatos. So uh, when I told her this, again, she hadn't been responsive. Uh, she gave us, or she gave me a smirk. It was subtle, but she, she was happy to hear that. I'm not gonna lie, I took that as a sign that, hey, I should try to keep talking to her. So um, I try to work up the courage to, to go downstairs to the fourth floor. I didn't see her, then I went again. Uh, she was at the nurse's station. Uh, then I think either on the third or fourth try, I walk out, boom, she's at the elevator or by the elevator. And I was like, oh, hey. Um, and then she moved her cart. And even though she was in between uh, patients, she moved her cart and acknowledged me and, and gave me the time of day. So uh, the World Cup was happening and I was trying to fill her in, you know, kind of break the ice. And I almost psyched myself out, but I went ahead and said, hey, you know, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to get your number and maybe we can hang out sometime. But, she has a boyfriend. This love story, short-lived. So I'm sorry to burst y'all's bubble, but trust me, my bubble was also worse than <laughs> um, But yeah, so that's where Caramel Macchiato came about. I thought it was uh, playfully flirty, and it's still part of the story. Hey, so you made it to the end of part one, but listen, that just means that there's a part two out there coming right at you next week, March 10th at 3 p.m. You'll be able to watch part two of Asteria, the documentary, so mark it on your calendars. But since you made it this far, I got a special announcement for you. Are you ready? Okay, so the online store is open for business, and that just means that you can buy a piece of Asteria merch to carry a part of this journey with you anywhere you go. Uh, we got hoodies, t-shirts, mugs, uh, reusable canvas bags for when you go shopping. So I'm going to leave the link in the description. Check it out. Hopefully you see something you like. 
and thank you in advance for supporting this channel looking forward to hearing all your feedback in the comments section and until next time guys take care but seriously don't forget to mark it on your calendars on your calendar apps next week march 10th at 3 p.m part two just saying